Hello and welcome to our Who Done It program, a presidential investigation. This program is brought to you by the education team at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. My name is Ivy and I'll be working with you today. So the first thing we'll get into today is the mission. So we have been given a letter by President George Bush. It is top secret, though disclaimer, this is not an original primary source document. Let us go ahead and read together what it says. I'll start right here at National Security Review. Memorandum for my fellow Americans. Subject, the success of the United States is dependent upon you, the people. My fellow Americans, we need your help. The George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum is creating a new exhibit highlighting the military service of the presidents of the United States. They received quotes, letters, and visuals from all over the nation. Unfortunately, my dog Sully ran through the office and mixed up all the primary sources from these great American presidents. I need your help. Investigate these primary sources to determine which president they best belong. Now remember, a great investigator justifies their answer with facts from the source. Make sure to pay close attention to any clues the primary sources might give you. I have provided a quick review for you to look over before you begin your investigation. Thank you for your service to our country. Good luck. The future of our nation is in your hands. Sincerely, George Bush. Okay, so we have a letter. We have a challenge. We know that Bush's dog named Sully kind of caused it to be in a disarray. And we'll be sorting that out. But we first will begin with reviewing our presidents. So today, the presidents that we're covering are George H.W. Bush, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, James Madison, Harry S. Truman, and Dwight D. Eisenhower. So, of our six presidential options, which president was in the American Revolution, a colonel in the Orange County Militia, and president during the War of 1812. Okay, considering we're talking about a war uh, that was in 1812, we can go ahead and eliminate George H.W. Bush, Harry S. Truman, and Dwight Eisenhower, as well as Abraham Lincoln. So our options, especially for a president that was in the American Revolution, are between George Washington and James Madison. Now, let's think about what we possibly know. So let's go for the low-hanging fruit of George Washington. Was George Washington a colonel in the American Revolution, or was he the general? If you are thinking general, you are correct because he was the leader of the forces, so he was a, at the highest rank. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate George Washington from our list because we're looking for a colonel, and that is going to leave us with James Madison. And there we go. So James Madison. All right, next... We're looking for the president, which was in World War I and World War II. General of the Army in the United States Army. And president 
during the Korean War. Okay, so we're focusing in on the World War, so we can go ahead and cross out Lincoln, Washington, and Madison from our list. That leaves us with Bush, Truman, and Eisenhower. Now, each of these three gentlemen were involved in the World Wars. However, this one calls for World One, World War One, and World War Two. So, while Bush is a veteran of World War Two, he was actually a Navy pilot. He was not involved in World War One, so he is not the president we're looking for. That's going to leave us with Truman and Eisenhower. Okay. So, which president between Truman and Eisenhower came first? Who was the earlier president? Truman or Eisenhower? If you're saying Truman, you are right on the money. He was actually president during World War II. So he probably he would not have been actively on the military fields during World War II because he was busy bringing president. So we can go ahead and take him off our list of options. And we're left with Dwight D. Eisenhower as being in World War I and World War II, general of the army in the United States Army, and president during the Korean War. Okay, so next we have which president was in World War II, lieutenant in the United States Navy, president of the United States during Operation Desert Storm. Okay, so we're looking at World War II again. We've already chosen Dwight D. Um, Dwight D. Eisenhower, so we can go ahead and cross them off for this round. We know it's not James Madison. We know it's not George Washington. George Washington came way too early. Same with Abraham Lincoln. So we are left with Truman and George H.W. Bush. Now, we know that they were in World War II, so we're left with the same issue of Truman being president during that time. Um, so he wasn't on the battlefield. And we are left with George H.W. Bush, who is a veteran of World War II and was president during, during Operation Desert Storm in the 1990s. Okay, so next. Oh, here's your little answer page. And next one. Let's break this down again. Which president was in World War I? Major general in the Missouri National Guard and president during World War II. All right, his name has come up a couple times now. Which president is this? Go ahead and just tell me. And if your answer was... Harry S. Truman, you are correct. He followed FDR as president during World War II, and he served in World War I. Okay, next, we're going to harken back to the earlier days of the presidency, and we're looking for the president who was in the Black Hawk War was captain of the Illinois militia and president of the United States during the Civil War. All right, so we know some of the not modern ones, so not Bush, not Truman, not Eisenhower. We've already used Madison, so our options are between Lincoln and Washington. And we, I'm sure, know which president um, was acting during the Civil War. So let's say together on the count of three. One, two, three. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Last one for our review. 
which president was in the American Revolution commander in chief of the Continental Army first president of the United States all right go ahead on the count of three tell me one two three George Washington. Excellent. Okay, so those are going to be the presidents we are working with today. It's going to be George H.W. Bush, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Harry S. Truman, James Madison, and Dwight D. Eisenhower. So, to start, we are going to be working with an image sort. So, as we know from the letter that George Bush wrote us, Sully, his service dog, scattered all the pictures around, as well as quotes and letters, but we're going to start with organizing the photos. So, we're going to identify which president the image best belongs with. Okay? We're going to do it together. Okay, to start, we have 12 images. Now, there's going to be two images per president. So we can use some of that process of elimination skills as well as our other observation skills to help us sort out who is who in the photographs. If you'd like to take notes on a piece of paper, please do so. If you would like to do it in your head, you can do that too. It's just a really good skill to practice as we go along of justifying your answer. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Looking at these, we're going to start with this image right here because there's some text to go along with it. So let's see what it says. Oh, and we have a nice convenient name bank of all the presidents right here on our left. So cool. So we have the picture of a gentleman, somebody. On the right, it is in black and white. It is a photograph, so probably not our earlier set of presidents. We're probably looking at our later set of presidents, which is Truman, Eisenhower, and Bush. Um, and it has a name very conveniently on the image, which says Harry S. Truman. So which president is this? Yeah, it's going to be Truman. So let's go ahead and label that on our screen. So Truman there, and we have 11 images left. Okay, so we're going to go next. Let's go for another photograph because we're already on a roll here. So let's focus on a photograph, which we know probably is going to push us towards more of the modern day presidents. Let's see what we get. Okay. So we're seeing cloud burst that's going up into the sky. And then there's a ring of clouds in the middle. And then darker clouds on the bottom. That's a like, like a tube of clouds. Uh, I should say that the top cloud looks rather mushroom in shape. So this is a very famous image. What is this an image of? What is a mushroom cloud generally associated with? If you're writing down or thinking or even saying that the answer is the atomic bomb, you are correct. This is a picture of an atomic bomb explosion. So, we're looking for someone who was involved in World War II. Specifically, we're going to look at the person who gave the order. So, who was president in World War II during the atomic bombings? Which president did we discuss that was president during World War II? If your answer is Truman, you are on a roll. And we're going to go ahead and put Truman 
as with the atomic bomb image. Okay, that gives us five presidents left to sort out. So let's continue with our role and continue with a photograph. So we still have five options. We have Washington, Madison, Lincoln, Eisenhower, and Bush. And right here, we're looking at an image. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I count this person in the back? Ten? Oh, I think I did, but maybe up over here. So there's about ten people in the image. They're walking across the sand. Um, there's very strong sunshine because they have long shadows. The people, for the most part, are wearing desert camo. So we're looking at some sort of military operation that is occurring in a desert. And we do see our president right here. He is wearing blue with khaki pants, and he's the only one not in camo. And his wife is with him. So with those clues, thinking of the fact that they're in a desert and that one of the presidents was president during Operation Desert Storm, which president does this image belong with? And if your answer is President Bush, you are completely on the right track. So he was president during Operation Desert Storm, and that was him visiting some of the troops. Okay, let us continue on. Let's go, let's change it up, but let's still go with something with some color with it. So we're looking now at an image. Our president is within an oval shape framing. Um, around him is like a painting of stone and he's like inside of it with like clouds around him. He's wearing a full uniform with like these shoulder pads that have like gold braid coming off of them. And he's wearing like a blue outfit with gold um, accents and he has hair is all white and powdered presumably because of the time period. So it's an older image that we're looking at. It is a painting rather than a photograph. And his face should look familiar, like what you would find on a 25 cent coin. So, which president is this one? Excellent. If your answer is Washington, you are spot on. Good job. Okay. Well, let's move along at a pace. Next one. So we have that labeled as Washington and we're going to go with a drawing next, possibly an etching. Okay, so this one is black and white. It's pretty busy. There's a lot happening. So let's kind of divide it in half. So if we're, let's divide it in half and look at what's happening. So on the bottom half of this image, we see soldiers. They look to be carrying some sort of rifles, possibly with bayonets. They are... There are carts, there are huge loads being held, they're wearing these hats that are rather tall. So clearly we are seeing some sort of military grouping. Okay, so that's in the bottom half. And if we look at the top half, there are some trees on the right side, but there's also a building that is burning. And the building is rather... Roman or Greek inspired. There's columns to it. There's um, a sort of triangular top to it. So thinking back onto our review, we know that one of the presidents was involved in the War of 1812. What happened during the War of 1812? What did the British do to Washington? or more specifically, the White House. And if your answer is they burned it, you are correct. So Washington actually never lived in um, the White House. It didn't exist at the time. Madison was very early on in the presidents who lived in the White House. And, um, well, 
in this case, it burned. So that information between our early presidents of Washington, Madison, and Lincoln, who can we probably say this image belongs to or with? Between Washington, Madison, and Lincoln. And if your answer is Madison, you are correct. So let's go ahead and label that one. We are on a roll. So next. Okay, it is our a tall president, and he is standing in front of a crowd with another crowd behind him, and he is on a, he's on a stage and he's appearing to give a speech. And honestly, his hairstyle is very similar to that of the president you can find on the penny. So with that in mind, this one is probably President Lincoln. Okay. Next. Okay, so there are four gentlemen in the room, and actually in one of the background windows, there is a rainbow. Okay, so looking at the profile and the outfits, who do you think this is? Go ahead and make your guess. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say this one is President Lincoln, just based on the style of dress and how his profile looks like that which is on the penny. So let's go ahead and have that there. So Lincoln. Okay, next one. Okay, so we still have Washington, Madison, Eisenhower, and Bush left. And this image is fairly famous, or at least fairly recognizable. So let's kind of dissect what we're seeing. We're seeing uh, soldiers, uh, some of whom are on horseback, some of whom are on foot, including this drummer boy right here. And there is snow cover on the ground. So from the horses, we can guess probably not Bush, probably not Eisenhower. And so definitely one of our earlier people. And based off the snow cover and just the look of these uniforms, I think we can make a pretty good guess as this being which president, Washington or Madison. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say my guess is Washington. We'll know at the end for sure, for sure, um, if everyone has, you know, two images at the end, but... I'm going to lean towards Washington. You guys can do different, but there we go. Okay, next one. So let's look a little bit more closely at the images here. There are cannons in use. There are soldiers in red being fired upon, and the side doing the firing has an American flag, an early version of an American flag, because... There are definitely less than 50 stars. Okay, so this is probably from the War of 1812. So, probably Madison. So that leaves us with Eisenhower and Bush as our remaining presidential options. Okay, that gives us three images. So let's just go ahead and look at those all three together. So we have president in military uniform. Here's a group of people in military uniform and then an image from the Little Rock desegregation days. So let's focus on the military images first and figure out who is who here. Okay, so we see one, two, three, four stars on this uniform. He is sitting in a jeep pretty famous image, so um, clearly a general, high rank. Which president? Yes, Eisenhower, probably Eisenhower, and we know Bush was a pilot, specifically in the Navy, but he was definitely a pilot, and in this image right here, we see a plane in the background, as well as um, 
some young pilots um, posing for their photo. So this one is going to be President Bush. Excellent. Okay. And that leaves us with our last image, which is the Little Rock um, High School um, being desegregated. So you have students surrounded by the National Guard for their own protection. And this occurred during whose presidency? Think about when this occurred, what time period we're talking about. Got it? Got the president? Okay. If your guess is President Eisenhower, you are right on the money. He was president during the 50s, and President Bush was president during the 90s, like very late 80s, early 90s. Okay. So that is all of the images labeled and all of them sorted out by president so they each have two. Excellent. Okay, so we're ready for the next challenge. Okay, so we are now ready for our keyword activity, who said that section. So how this is going to work is we will be pulling a quote or a letter from this bag right here. And we'll read it together, then we'll identify some keywords to help us identify which president, which president uh, to associate it with. Okay, let's get started. So first one first, September 3rd, 1944. And this one is a bit long, so let's start from the second paragraph and read it together. Yesterday was a day which will long stand in my memory. I was on a bombing hop with Delaney as my radio man and Lieutenant Ted White as my gunner. I will have to skip all the details of the attack as they would not pass the censorship, but the fact remains that we got hit. The cockpit filled with smoke, and I told the boys in back to get their parachutes on. They didn't hear, they didn't answer at all, but I looked around and couldn't see Ted in the turret, so I assumed he had gone below to get his chute fastened on. I headed the plane out to sea and put on the throttle so we could get away from the land as much as possible. I am not too clear about the next parts. I told them to bail out, and then I called the skipper and told him I was bailing out. Okay, so just take a moment, please, and either in your head or on a piece of paper, write out some of the key words that you're seeing. Okay, so I'll write out some keywords as well. They may be the same. They may be different from yours. That is all good. So to start, we'll put down the date, or at least the year, 1944. So we have a time period around the Second World War. We have the word radio man. So we're definitely looking at something that is not the early presidents like Lincoln, Madison, and Washington, but definitely the latter presidents like Eisenhower, Truman, or Bush. Okay, next we know that there is an attack, so it's definitely during the war, and there's a cockpit, and so there. this is taking place on a plane. And the word plane even gets mentioned. Now, thinking back to the review, which president was a pilot in World War II? That's right, President 
Bush. So I think we can go ahead and say that this letter was written by President Bush well before he would ever know he was going to be president um, and back when he was a pilot in the World War. Okay, so let's pull the next one out. Okay, same thing. We'll read it together. The war has renewed and reinstated the national feelings and character which the revolution had given and which were daily lessened. The people are more American. They feel and act more as a nation. And I hope the permanency of the Union is hereby better secured. Secretary of Treasury Albert Gallatin. Okay, so go ahead, take a moment. Write down, think out some of the key words that you are seeing. Okay, again, I might have different ones from you, and that is perfectly good. I'm sure you guys did an amazing job. So let's start with the low-hanging fruit of 1816. So that kind of tells us it's going to be our earlier set of presidents, such as Washington, Madison, and Lincoln, as opposed to our latter set. Okay, so Mr. Gallatin definitely has feelings about the national character here and national feelings. Um, so he mentions the revolution, but he uses a past tense with it, had given. So that's definitely something that's happened in the past, and they're, um, and well, we can tell that from the date as well. All right. And he's saying that something has occurred in the nation that has now re reunited the people. And made a stronger union. Has better secured it. Okay. So based off the date. And the um, hint at an event. That has better secured the union. I will say. It could be referencing the war of. Which war could he be referencing? Exactly. The war of 1812. Okay, so who was president during the War of 1812? Was it Washington? No. Uh, was it Lincoln? Nah, his was the Civil War. Was it Madison? Yes, Madison. Excellent. Okay, so we can say that this statement was said during the time of President James Madison. Okay, let's go back to the grab bag. And let's pull our quote. Okay. The Soviet Union does not have to attack the United States to secure domination of the world. It can achieve its ends by isolating us and swallowing up all of our allies. Okay, same deal. I'll give you guys a moment. Write out some of the key words that are popping out at you. All right, and thank you for doing that. So let's do it together. Okay, so we'll start with the year, 1951. Um, another one that's jumping out here is the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union existed at a particular period of time, um, especially during the Cold War. It was our biggest mm, adversary after World War II. 
We're also talking about securing domination, so or rather the Soviet Union trying to secure domination by swallowing up allies. Okay, which led to a series of wars, actually, because you had this idea of the domino effect, that if one country fell to communism, the ones around it would fall as well. So this actually led to a series of wars, um, the Korean War, as well as the Vietnam War, actually, we got entangled in quite a few things. Um, So which president, if we remember back to our uh, review, which president was the president during the Korean War? So probably definitely not our early presidents, not Washington, Madison, or Lincoln. Truman was president during World War II, and Bush was president during Operation Desert Storm. So that's going to leave us with, yes, it's going to leave us with Eisenhower. Okay, so this quote was said by Eisenhower, President Eisenhower. Okay, next one. Here's our grab bag, and we're going to pull out a letter. Okay. Well, you know, we have such good luck with starting with the second paragraph in our first letter. Let's do the same thing here. So second paragraph. By a deserter from York, I hear that two British frigates followed the French fleet and returned after they had seen them out of the capes. A spy says that two schooners supposed to be French, have been seen coming up York River. But we have nothing so certain as to ensure your voyage, though it is probable Comte de Grasse will soon return. Forgive me if I said that name wrong. I very probably did. Okay, so let's look at a couple other details on this letter. It's addressed to my dear general, and it is signed by Lafayette. So with those clues, I'm going to give you guys a moment. Please think out or write out some of the keywords popping to you. Choose at least three, three keywords. Okay, so let's do this together. I think some important ones are going to be general. So we know it's addressed to someone who's a general rank. So there's only two presidents who achieved that rank. It was signed by Lafayette, which is quite the famous name. We are also talking about British frigates. Frigates being a type of ship. And we also have schooner. Now, I use the spelling that was used in the letter. Uh, So, yes, it's incorrect, but it's a little bit more fun that way. Um, What's really cool about looking at more uh, primary sources is you can actually see how people spelled it. Um, And everything here is copied just like how it was written in the letter that Lafayette wrote. So that's fun. Okay, and then we also are mentioning York River. Okay, so with keywords like General, Lafayette, British Frigates, Schooner, and York River, Who was this letter intended for? Which president received this letter? Was it our, it's probably not from our set of the latter presidents, so we can just kind of mentally cross those out. And then we just have one other president, 
remaining now that was a general. So which president was it? Okay, and if your answer is George Washington, you are right on the money. So let's see what we got next. Oh, okay, so that wraps up our keywords activity. And it is now time for our wrap-up activity of the pillars to live by. Excellent. As you can see on this page, there are three pillars to live by. Lifetime of service, putting people first in decision-making, and building relationships to better the world. All three of these were inspired by George H.W. Bush's life both before, during, and after his presidency. All right, so let us do the... Hmm, let's do the first one together. That's, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we have lifetime of service. So for this, you have two options. You can look at examples from President Bush's life such as the fact that he served in the military during World War II, or that after that he ran for public office and held it for a very long time. The other option is to think about ways that you see yourself providing a lifetime of service to others now and in the future, such as through volunteerism, or maybe you'll end up running for public office one day, things like that. So how, how can you help others over time? So that would be a great example to put in lifetime of service. And then you just do the same for putting people first in decision making and building relationships to better the world. And you can do this in your head or on a separate piece of paper. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today with our program. Today, we resorted the images, quotes, and letters that Sully ran through. We provided evidence to support our conclusions, and we wrapped up with the pillars to live by. We do have other premier programs available for download at bush41.org or for viewing at connecttotexas.org. If you have any questions, please contact us at bush.education at nara.gov. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a lovely day.